Now in this video we're, we're going to show you what we actually do with all this. When we're looking at the marginal rate of substitution and marginal utility, what's all this good for? Well, here's the typical finale to this kind of analysis of looking at marginal rate of substitution. What we want to do is set up problems where we give people a budget, we give them money, and we tell them the prices of these two goods, again x down here on the x-axis, the y good is up here on the y-axis, and we want to know for a given utility function what would this person spend their money on. And so that's what we want to solve right now. Now remember you have to keep in mind that in the last video we found the marginal rate of substitution and there's a trick to finding marginal rate of substitution. I made a video on that as well. Or if you want to know the slope of any indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution function is equal to, of x4, y, is equal to, you just take the exponents, divide the exponents by each other, so that's going to be one-third divided by two-thirds and then times y over x. That's the marginal rate of substitution function. It's the ratio of the exponents and then y on the top, x on the bottom. And that's true for any Cobb-Douglas utility function like this. Watch my video if you're not convinced. So we know the slope of these indifference curves is given to us at any point by this marginal rate of substitution function. And we can simplify that. Let's go ahead. We want to make things as simple as we can one-third over two-thirds is the same as one over two. So this is just y over two x. So plug in any x and y and that'll tell you the slope of that indifference curve. Now why is that so important? Well it's important on its own because we do want to be able to understand this concept of marginal rate of substitution. How many y's am I willing to give up to get one more x is what we would uh, how we would interpret the slope along those points. How many y's am I willing to give up to get one x? At least at what rate am I willing to give up y's to get one more x? Because it's, it's really just the slope at a point. If we move this direction any distance at all, that slope changes. So we know the slope of the indifference curves. Now we need to talk about a budget line. Let me give you some numbers so that we can talk about a budget line. Suppose I gave you an income of, let's see, $8, for example. No, let's see, I, I want to make these, these numbers as simple as I can. I'm going to give you an income of $4. So I'm going to give you $4. That's your income or your budget. So we'll call that B for budget. Some people call it I for income. And uh, we also need to know the prices of these two products that we're talking about. So to keep things simple, we're going to have, uh, say, the price of X is going to be equal to $2, or 2 euros, or 2 whatever. And then the uh, price of Y, let's make that just $1. Dollar. So if someone has this utility function, u equals x to the one-third times y to the two-thirds and they had four dollars in their pocket and the price of x was two dollars and the price of y was one dollars question what would they buy to maximize their utility well it's a difficult problem but we're going to make it as simple as we possibly can to to see graphically what's happening what we do is we have these indifference curves here and we need to draw what's called a budget line now a budget line is a way of telling us what can this person afford because we don't know what the best bundle is unless we know what they can actually afford. Now this budget line has to satisfy this equation that the four dollars you have has to be equal to the price of x two times how many x's you buy let's just leave that general as x plus one dollar times how many y's you buy. All right, this is just an equation for your budget line. Two dollars times the number of x's plus one dollar times the number of y's is equal to how much money you have in your pocket. 
how do we graph that? Well, the easy way to graph that is just to ask the question. We just need to find two points. Suppose I spent my entire $4 on Ys, which are $1 each. How many could I afford? Well, of course, you could afford four of those. So that's one point that's on that budget line. Zero times, times two. You're buying no Xs here. Um, plus four times Y equals four. Well, that point satisfies that equation. Let's find another easy point. What if I spent all my money on X's and no Y's? Well, I could only afford two X's because two times two is four dollars. All right, there we go. There's that point, the other end of the budget line. Now what we want to do here is draw a straight line, and this is going to be difficult for me to do since I'm drawing with a pen here, but I'm going to do as best I can to draw a straight line. Not too bad on my part. I could probably do a little better. This line is what we call the budget line. Now, what do we want to do to get the best bundle we can? Well, we want to maximize our utility. Where do we maximize your, our utility? Well, our utility gets higher as we move that way. More X and more Y. And sometimes we'll draw a little point way up here in the top right corner and call that a bliss point. The bliss point is a place where we get the most utility, at least on this graph. So we want to move in that direction as much as we can. And so uh, another thing to keep in mind is we want to be on the highest indifference curve we can. Now you see this kind of golden or beige colored indifference curve right here. Now we no, we could do that. We, we could get on that indifference curve if we were right here. And maybe that's about a third of an X and three and a half Y's, right? We could get that level of utility, which is this one and a half right here. We could do that. Or we could also get one and a half utils if we buy about one X and about 1.8 Y's or so, right? But we know we could do better. We could do better by a point somewhere in here. Why do we know that? Well, we know there's an indifference curve that's going to go, you know, it's going to look something like these other indifference curves that are running through here, but it's going to be higher. It's going to be more than one and a half utils and closer to two, the, the greenish line here, right? We can't get the two utils, but we can get something between one and a half and two. And the point is going to be somewhere between those two points where we get one and a half utils. Hopefully that logic is kind of obvious there. Now let's find exactly where that point is that, that we can get to exactly what that optimal point is. How do we do that? Well, there are some fancy calculus methods that I'll show you later that we can use, but let's, let's stick with a simple idea. The simple idea is, what's going to be true at that point? Well, the slope of the budget line is going to be equal to the slope of the indifference curve, right? Now, on this gold one, we can see that, you know, that slope of that indifference curve back there is going to be equal to the slope of the budget line. That's how, that's how we can tell that we're at a maximum point. That's one way we can tell. The other thing we want to make sure is that we're actually on the budget line because look, the, the slope of this indifference curve is equal to the slope of that budget line, but that's not what we want to buy. We don't want to buy a third of an X and one and a half Y's because we can do much better than that. So there are actually two equations, two things that must be true. The slope of the budget line equals the slope of the indifference curve. So let's call that equation one that must be satisfied. How can we write that? Well, we know the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution. Marginal rate of substitution. That has to equal the slope of the budget line. Here's the easy way to write the slope of the budget line. It's just the price of X over the price of Y. How do we know that? Well, let's check that out right here. This, the price of X was 2. The price of Y was 1. So 2 over 1 must be the slope of that line. Well, sure enough, it is, because between those two points, the rise is minus 4. The run is 2. So the slope 
is 2 over 1. It's actually negative 2, but, um, sorry, 4 over 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. It's actually negative, and the marginal rate of substitution is technically negative also, but we just remove the minus signs here to keep things a little easier. So this is one equation that has to be satisfied. The other equation that has to be satisfied is that we spent all our money. That's how we know that we're not at a point back here, but we're at a point up here uh, where our utility is maximized. So in general, the equation for a budget line in general is, sorry, my uh, price of y went away there. In general, the, price, the equation of a budget line, that's the second of equation we're going to use, is the price of x times x plus the price of a times y equals your budget. Those are the two equations that have to be satisfied. Well, let's just do this very quickly for the example that we have. The marginal rate of substitution, let's just fill things in, is y over 2x in this example. So we have this equation is going to be y over 2x equals the ratio of the prices, 2 over 1. All right, so that's one equation. The second equation is what we have written right here. 4 equals 2x plus 1y. So, or 2x plus um, y equals 4. So our job now is to... Um, my screen is not really writing what I want to. I'm down near the edge of the screen and things are goofing up. How are we going to solve it? Well, we have two equations and two unknowns. Y and X are unknown, and we have two equations here. What are we going to do? Well, we just want to figure out the easiest way to solve for one of these variables, X or Y, and plug it into the other one. So what we could do here I see this is probably going to be easy to solve for y. You can solve this for y equals 4x. So solve equation number 1 for y, y equals 4x. And then plus budget constraint for 4x. So here we have 2x. Plug that into equation 2. 2x plus 4x equals 4. Now we have 6x equals 4. That tells us that x equals 2 thirds. All right, because we're going to have uh, 4 over 6 there equals x. So if x equals 2 thirds, let's figure out what y is going to be. We can plug it back into any of these equations, this one or this one. Or what's probably easiest is actually this one. We know y equals 4x, because that, all that is equation number 1 rewritten. So if y equals 4x and x equals 2 thirds, then y must equal two, 4 times 2 thirds, 8 thirds, which is just the same thing as 2 and 2 thirds. Where is that optimal point that we are looking for here? It's going to be at x equals about two-thirds and y equals two and two-thirds right at that point where I thought it was going to be. So this is an example of a constrained maximization problem where we have maximized our utility given a utility function and given a budget and prices to recap, what we do is we need to just fill in information for these two equations. In general, marginal rate of substitution equals price of x over price of y. But make sure you know what that means. That's telling us that the slope of the budget line is equal to the slope of the indifference curve at that point. And this equation, our budget line, just ensures that we're spending our money so that we don't end up at a point back here, but we end up at the point where our utility is maximized. So I'll end this video now. We've covered enough.